Hey kids, it's Miss Future. This video is all about solving linear quadratic systems. Before we get into the linear quadratic systems, I want to review linear systems with you guys, just because it may have been a little while. Um, there's three methods that we use, graphing, substitution, and elimination, and we'll start with the graphing. So when you graph these, if you're going to use your graphing calculator, you're going to want to get y by itself. So if we took this first equation, we would subtract 2x from both sides, and then we would divide by 3. So we'd have y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 7 thirds, and then we could put that into our calculator. Or we could graph it by hand with a y-intercept of 7 thirds and a slope of negative 2 thirds. Then we could take the other one and add 4x to both sides and divide by negative 8, and we get 4 over 8 is negative 1 half x, and then minus 5 eighths. So you could put that in y2 and that in y1, or graph them both by hand, and they would look like this. And to find the intersection in your calculator, which is over here, you would hit second calc intersect, and it would give you an ordered pair of, in this case, 17.75 comma negative 9.5. Now let's review substitution. So here's two linear equations. Remember in substitution you have to isolate one of the variables. Um, in this case I'll just isolate x in the first equation. So that means we've got to um, subtract 3y minus 5 and then divide by 8. So we have x equals negative 3 eighths y minus 5 eighths. And then you have to plug that x in to the x in the other equation. So we have 4 times negative 3 eighths y minus 5 eighths minus 2y equals 1. And then you multiply this all out, and we're going to end up getting y equals negative 1. I'm saving you the time. Um, and then you plug it back in, right? You can plug it back in. Um, the easiest place to do it would be right there and plug it in to get an x value of negative one-fourth. And then when you answer the question, remember you're always giving an ordered pair, so negative one-fourth is the x and negative one is the y. And now for elimination, you take your two equations and you pick a variable to eliminate. In this case, we'll just eliminate x. So then you multiply each equation by whatever you need to multiply it by, to make the x's cancel out. So I'm going to multiply this equation by 3 to get 21x, and I'm going to multiply this one by negative 7 so that I have negative 21x. So now I'm going to have 21x plus 12y equals 27. You have to do it to everything. And then down here I have negative 21x. Negative 7 times 5 is minus 35y equals a negative 7 times negative 6 is positive 42. Then we just add the two lines together. These cancel out. They eliminate. 12 minus 35 is negative 23y. And 27 and 42 make 69. So we divide both sides by 69, and we get negative 3 for the y. And then you can repeat that process to get the, um, the x value, or you can just plug this y in into either one of your originals. Um, so we'll just go with 7x plus 4y equals 9, 7x minus 12 equals 9, 7x equals 21, and x equals 3. So we have our ordered pair, 3, negative 3. So those are the three methods that we, uh, you should hopefully already know for linear systems. And we're going to use those same methods to cross lines with quadratics. Now when we intersect two lines, remember we have the option of having one solution where they cross once, no solution where they're parallel, or infinitely many solutions where they're the same line. When we have quadratics, we could have no solution, because we could have our parabola up here and our line over here and they don't cross at all. We could have just one solution, and that would be something where the line is tangent to the parabola at some point, and so it just touches once, or two solutions where our line 
crosses twice. So now let's use the graphing method for this system of equations. We have a line and we have a parabola. So what we need to do is rearrange them both so that y is by themselves. And the first one's already like that, so yay. Um, but the second one, we need to get y by itself, means we need to multiply both sides by 8. 8x plus 8 equals y squared. And then we need to take the square root. So we need y equals plus or minus the square root of 8x plus 8. Sorry about the bell. You have to use the plus and the minus when you graph this in your calculator because think about this. y squared is a sideways parabola. And so the plus, x squ or the plus square root is going to give you the top part and the minus square root is going to give you the bottom part. So we're going to put those both in our calculator. We'll put this in y1. We'll put y2 is the positive version of this and y3 will be the negative version of this. So there's what I put in my calculator, then I'm going to graph it. So you can see that we have our sideways parabola in our line. And then we need to find the two intersections. We need this one, and we need this one. So we're going to hit second, calc, intersect. If you didn't already know that, write it down. And you're going to have to do it twice. We've graphed three things in here. So when we do the first one, it's going to ask us for the first curve and so you make sure you're on y1 and then the second curve so you're going to make sure you're on y2 which is the top part and then intersect enter and we ought to get an answer of negative one half two negative one half comma two for that one and then you need to do it again and you need to go um, first line here or first curve here second curve you need to make sure you're on y3 and then when you hit enter, 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 you'll get that one, which is 1, negative 4. So you can use your calculator. All right, now we're going to try the substitution method. And I've got two conics here. Um, you're used to seeing parabolas. This is actually the equation of a circle, no, a hyperbola. But it doesn't matter what kind of conic we use. Um, it's all squared, so it's all the same process. So substitution, you always want to pick a variable and isolate it, and then plug it into the other equation. So on this one, I think I'm going to isolate y, and I'm going to do it in here, because that's really simple, y equals 5 fourths x. And then I'm going to plug it in for this y right here. So I now have 5 fourths x squared over 9 minus x squared over 9 equals 1. And I need to clean this up a bit. Now one thing I could do, because they're both divided by 9, is multiply everything by 9, which I think I'm going to do. So 5 fourths squared is 25 sixteenths x squared minus x squared equals 9. Right? I just took everything and multiplied it by 9 so that these would cancel. All right, so now I can combine 25 sixteenths x squared minus 16 sixteenths x squared. 25 minus 16 is going to be uh, 9. So 9 sixteenths x squared equals 9. And then we'll mo multiply both sides by the reciprocal. So now we have x squared equals 16, right? Cross out the 9s. And x equals plus and minus 4. You can have two answers on these, so we need to have both the plus or minus. Those of you who are prone to forgetting it, start, like, I don't know, smacking yourself every time you forget so that you don't do that anymore. Okay, so now that we have our two x's, we're going to go back over here and plug each of them in. So we've got y equals 5 fourths of positive 4, gives us 5, and y equals 5 fourths times negative 4, which is negative 5. And then you write your answer as two ordered pairs. So the first one was positive 4, positive 5. And the second one was negative 4, negative 5. There you go. Now I'm going to warn you that sometimes when you plug these in, I was lucky this time because I only had y equals 5 fourths x. I didn't have a constant with this. But sometimes when you plug something with a constant in, like that, then you have to FOIL. So be careful, there's going to be a lot of FOILing going on um, when we do our substitution sometimes. 
All right, now our third method is elimination. So I've got this quadratic. It's um, negative x squared plus 12x plus 4y minus 84 equals 0. We could rearrange that all to y equals, but there's no need. And then we have 2x plus y equals 1. Now, personally, if this was me, I would isolate y, plug it in here, and then solve the quadratic. Um, but we don't have to. Elimination works, um, but it only works if you can eliminate a variable. So in this case, I'm going to eliminate y. If I tried to eliminate x, I couldn't do it because there's x squared and 12x, and then there's only 2x here, so it wouldn't work. But because there's only one of each y term, we can do that. And so I would need to multiply everything in my second line by negative 4 so that I'd have negative 8x minus 4y equals negative 4. And then I need to line them up. So I need to make this um, equal 0 so that I have negative 8x minus 4y plus 4 equals 0. And then I'm going to line my two equations up. So I'm going to put this first one. I'm just going to recopy it over here. Negative x squared. And then I'm going to take this other one and write it underneath. Minus 8x minus 4y plus 4 equals 0. And I'm going to add the two lines together. And now I have negative x squared. 12x minus 8x would be plus 4x. The y's eliminate. And then negative 84 plus 4 would be minus 80 equals 0. And now I've got a quadratic that I can solve. And we all know how to solve quadratics. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of that negative. x squared minus 4x plus 80 equals 0. And then I'm going to try to solve this quadratic. I'd say, well, could I factor it? Are there factors of 80 that add to negative 4? And there aren't. So then I'd say, well, could I do the quadratic formula? I'm going to first try my b squared minus 4ac. I'm going to test out my determinant um, discriminant because I want to do, I want to know if I could do it at all. So b squared is going to be 16 minus 4 times a is 1 and c is 80. So I know I'm doing 16 minus something really big. That's negative 304. And negatives, if the discriminant is negative, we've learned no real solutions. I put two S's. I don't know what I'm thinking. We're not going to play with imaginaries in here because we're, we're crossing quadratics with lines. We could find the imaginary solutions, but we're just going to stop at no real solutions um, for now because we're just doing systems. And in systems, it's on the real x and y coordinate plane. And on the real x and y coordinate plane, this parabola and this line don't cross each other ever. So no solution. And that's the end of that. So you guys have a good night, and I'll see you at school tomorrow.